Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna go over some of my favorite free tools for making videos. Like seriously, I hardly pay for anything to make my own videos. I don't pay for any subscription services and I rarely invest in new hardware for my videos. I'm a cheapskate, I'll admit it. It's a teacher life, gotta do it on the cheap. I've been making educational videos since 2013 and though my style and quality of videos vary widely, I do have a lot of experience on helping students make videos, making videos for myself or for other teachers or just for fun. So in this video, we're gonna go over my favorite free resources for making videos on YouTube right now. So let's get started. First of all, when you think about filming, the camera technology in phones and computers has gotten so much better over the past few years that I do not hesitate to film on my phone. I'm doing this video on an iPhone 13 right now. This is actually the front facing camera and not the back camera, so it could get even better quality if I tweak my settings a little bit. But the easiest way to get started is to film and take out your phone. When you're thinking about stock footage, so things that you might want to use as B-roll or background footage in your videos, there's a lot of places that I go to to get really professional looking content for free. Unsplash is one of those that has some really high quality, beautiful pictures. Pixabay is another. I've found some great green screen animations, but also just some great regular pictures and stock footage that I can use in my videos. Pexels is another one that has a huge library of totally free video content, which you've probably seen in any of my other videos if you've watched any of my other videos before. Cover.co is a new one that I recently started using. Of course, Wikimedia Commons for images, especially if I need a particular scientific source and these are usually things that you can use for free as long as you give the proper attribution or credit in the description of your video. But one of my favorite ways to get background footage or b-roll is to film my own stuff. So go outside, get some shots of your own, and don't be afraid to fill your video with your own work. It is easier sometimes to find stock footage from someone else to make your video look professional, but sometimes the least time consuming way and the cheapest way is to do it by yourself outside. Now for thumbnails, icons, and transitions in my videos, I use free image creating software like Google Tools or Canva is my favorite go-to. There's so many things you can do in Canva now, it's really incredible. All my transitions into in between different sections of my videos I edit in Canva. They're really simple animations that make things look really professional that you can use. Canva does have a lot of pro features that I don't pay for <laughs> too, but you can look into those as well if you need some more guidance for templates for videos. When I edit my thumbnails and add icons to it, I often do that in Canva, but another great place for thumbnail creation or editing is Google Slides. It's super Super simple to find really great slides templates on places like Slides Carnival. Use those templates for professional looking slides within your videos and then use that to both create your videos or to make thumbnails after the fact. Now if I need to do any image editing for my videos, I will use a free knockoff of Photoshop called Photopia, which is available online. Now it is supported by ads and you can support them if you would like, but to use the tool and the suite of resources that is pretty much like Photoshop, you can go to this site for free. When I was a student and when I was in grad school, I did have have access to Adobe resources, so I learned how to use things like Photoshop and Illustrator. So if you're not familiar with things like Photoshop, this tool may be a little bit difficult to use at first, but on the whole, I think it's a great equivalent to Photoshop, especially if you're looking for something free to use. I start off and edit most of my thumbnails in here, and it's really easy to do simple things like blurring the background or creating outlines around images. So I encourage you to check it out if you're looking for something for that. Now for graphics in my videos, a lot of times I'm creating models of things like proteins or cell signaling pathways or photosynthesis. And I found the best and easiest way to do this simply is in things like Google Slides or Google Drawings. There are plenty of other image or drawing tools out there. I think these are some of the simplest ones and really easy for students and teachers to access and manipulate. The best part is I can save all my images and reuse them and repurpose them in different ways. Take an image I create in Google Drawings, stick it in slides or stick it in a Google Doc, and it's super simple to manipulate and use over and over again. I can also download these as vector graphics or as PNGs for use in overlay in a video or somewhere else if I need it. Now, if I need to record by screen, which I've done several times in this video, I used to use Screencast-O-Matic a lot and that was a really decent tool. It does have a watermark and a 10 or 15 minute limit if you're using the free version, but it is a great tool and super simple and easy to use. There are lots of other free screen recording tools, but my favorite and most easy one to use if you do have QuickTime is the QuickTime screen recorder. So I have a Mac and I'm able to record my screen very easily with QuickTime. This gives me great high quality footage that I can use if I need to record my screen to demonstrate anything in one of my videos. QuickTime screen capture tools are exactly what I need for totally free, so, so don't don't forget to use it if you have it. Now for music and sound effects, a lot of times I film or record my own sound effects. I've even created my own music on occasion. But the easiest place I've found to use to find music and to use it is YouTube's free audio library, where you can get music either totally free or for free if you attribute it to somebody else. Oh, and YouTube's free audio library 
is constantly growing and even though it's not the largest audio library out there it does have some great resources and you can search by mood or genre to find the perfect sounds for your video now for editing i do use the default editing software that comes with my tools and since i have an iphone and a mac that is imovie I've edited my videos both on the iMovie app on my phone and on, of course, iMovie on my computer. I have not upgraded to Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere, even though I have used those tools in the past. I think for the videos that I make, the educational resources that I do, I can do a lot within iMovie as long as I'm creative about putting things together, using overlays creatively, and not wanting to add too many crazy special effects. If you have a PC, there are things like Movie Maker that you can use on your own. I recommend checking out whatever your computer comes with as a movie editing software first or even editing on your phone before you go out and buy something expensive. Most of the time, simple editing tools are your best choice and they're free. If I'm editing shorts, I do use CapCut on occasion. That one is pretty easy to learn and manipulate or the YouTube Shorts Editor, which is straight within the YouTube app on your phone. Again, both of these are free and pretty easy to learn in my experience. Now, the next part may not be a factor if you're just creating a video for class or for your students, but if you wanna make sure your videos reach a wider ranging audience, you wanna pay attention to SEO or search engine optimization. A lot of my videos do really well because they rank in Google search or YouTube search. So when somebody Googles how to draw a food web, one of my videos is one of the top things to come up. There are tons of free resources out there to help you get ideas for what to title your video and what to put in the description so that you have good search engine optimization. Things like TubeBuddy or Answer the Public will help you discover terms that people are searching for. But I also like to source things that I know my students or fellow teachers are looking for, specific pain points that I know they want answered. That's how I decide to create my video content. I often look on Reddit forums to see what people are looking for and what questions they need answered or Google search trends to see how often a particular term has been searched over the past few years or months even. Now this just is the tip of the iceberg, but these are some of my favorite free tools that I use when I'm creating videos for my YouTube channel. And I hope that you can use some of these when you're creating videos for your class or for your own YouTube purposes. What other free resources do you rely on when you're making your videos? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.